I bought my jointer and thickness planer about a year ago, second hand from a local woodworker. It came with a push block which wasn't in great condition. The foam was starting to peel off the bottom and ideally I wanted two push blocks so that I could use one in each hand while jointing. I looked on the internet to buy some, but I couldn't really find any at a reasonable price so I decided to make some instead. I started with an offcut of pine which was around 40mm thick and 120mm wide. I marked up how big I wanted the push blocks to be which was around 180mm and cut the pieces out on the miter saw. Then I trimmed off the rough sawn edges on the table saw and used a hand plane to smooth all the surfaces. I marked out a shape for the handles by hand and then made two indentations with a spade bit where I could drill a couple of pilot holes to start shaping the handle. I drilled a pilot hole to guide the spade bit and then took out the rest of the material with the spade bit drilling from each side to avoid tear out. I cut out the rest of the shape for the handles on the bandsaw. I used a round file to round over the edges I drilled out and a knife to carve away some of the material to create a round over and make the handle more comfortable. I could have used a round over bit in the router for this but I was in the mood for using some hand tools. I did some more shaping on the disc sander and by hand using a 240 grit paper. followed by some more work with a file and finally my electric detail sander. Then I marked up where the handle should go to get it centred to the block and applied some wood glue. I used a clamp to hold it in place temporarily while I drilled through the block into the handle with a 3mm drill bit. I countersunk the holes and then drove in two drywall screws. That was the basic shape of the push blocks complete but they wouldn't be much use without something to grip the wood on the bottom. So I went to a local pound shop and found this rubber doormat, which I thought should do the job perfectly. I could easily cut it with scissors and I cut a couple of strips to the same width as the push blocks. I used some offcuts of a hardwood that I think was Sapili to make a couple of pieces that would clamp the pieces of doormat to the front and back of the push blocks. I cut the pieces to length on the bandsaw. Then I marked up the height I wanted with a pencil and used a hand plane to take off the excess material. I then marked up a shape on the end grain of the hardwood pieces to cut on the table saw. 
I made two cuts to create a shallow rebate joint. I could then use the pieces of hardwood to clamp down the piece of doormat to the front and back of the push block using some more dry wall screws. I then applied some impact adhesive to the bottom of the push block and to the back of the doormat. Then it was just a case of stretching the piece of doormat to the other side of the push block before the glue started to cure and then attaching the other piece of hardwood in the same way as before. It was a little awkward to hold the piece of doormat stretched tightly to the push block while trying to attach the second piece of hardwood. I added some more drywall screws to the base just to hold it in place better. I had some more scraps of pine laying around and decided to use these to tidy up the sides of the push blocks. So I cut these to the same size as the sides of the push block. I used a hand plane to trim these pieces down to the right width and then glued a nail to the sides. I then applied a coat of boiled linseed oil and that was the push blocks completed. I set up the jointer to give them a test run and they worked pretty nicely. They are not the greatest designed push blocks in the world, but I didn't really put too much thought into making them. I just kind of built them on the fly. But hopefully this video may give you some ideas or inspiration to make your own 